Hi, so today I am going to uh, take a look at the carburettors on my BMW F650. I've had nothing but problems with it. Uh, I've got the tick over going okay, um, but what happens is when I give it a good rev or under load, just doesn't want to know. Get to about two and a half, three thousand revs. Uh, it almost sounds as if it's flooding, but it could be it could be one of two things. It could be flooding or not enough fuel getting in. It sounds very, very similar, unfortunately, the two symptoms. So I think there's a blockage. Uh, I did find quite a lot of uh, residue in there the last time I opened it up. Uh, there was all sorts in. Uh, so I've got a funny feeling that even though I've changed some of the jets, there's just something that's still stuck in there somewhere. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to get uh, an airline on it as well as everything else. Uh, and if this if this fails, I'm going to put uh, put it into an ultrasound bath. Uh, I haven't got one, so I don't really want to purchase one. So I'm going to try and clean it first. And if that doesn't work, then I'll have to uh, go ahead and buy one. I think it'd be cheaper to buy one nowadays and send it off to be done. So here's the bike. I've took the seat off. Um, I'm lucky that I'm, uh, I've got a barn to work in. Uh, not many people have got that uh, facility, so yeah, it's it's a good thing. Um, I've got all my tools ready. As you can see, there's the carbs under there. It, hell of a job to get to. I've got to take all this uh, covering off. I've got to take the tank off. Uh, I can leave the airbox in place, luckily. Um, but as you'll see later on, it's uh, one hell of a job to uh, to pull them out. Although I've got used to it a little bit more now because I've had them in and out that many times. So hopefully I can set the camera up so you can see what's going on. I'll try and give you a running commentary without swearing. Hopefully there won't be any blood anywhere uh, for those of you who've uh, got blood phobia. No, seriously, I hope I don't get any blood anywhere. So here we go. So I've got all the uh, bits and pieces organised, hopefully. Uh, a few uh, excess things. Start by taking some of the exterior plastics off. Don't know the size of that, so not very good with sizes. That's a three mil, three mil hex. Just put everything into a bucket so I don't lose anything. Although I did that last time and dropped one somewhere in a load of straw that's on the floor here and can I find it? Not at all. So there's one of the little trims. Put that somewhere safe. The excess, uh, excess fuel. I've got a rather large hose on there for the filter. Um, I changed this one and I could do with cutting it back a bit because it is a bit long now. It won't interfere with anything um, and if anything it does make it a little bit easier for me to, to get in and mess around. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna whip this off here. If I can, put that down, don't matter when a bit of fuel spills, I'm not that bothered. Oh yes, that's, that wasn't coming off, was it? Not coming off. Funny, isn't it? It'll, if you're not filming, it'll just drop off. Let's go in now. Try not to damage the the hose. I'm not too bothered in this case because it's quite, it's quite long. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. So I'm just going to drizzle a bit of fuel into there. There shouldn't be much. Need a bit of a shake. 
I had actually left a few on, uh, and I shouldn't have done really, I should have turned it off a while ago. My carbs are probably full of fuel now. Gravity will do its job. So, let's give it a bit of that a minute. So, everything's disconnected. There's also a drain hose under here. Got that on a clip at the moment. So, I'm just gonna ease that off. There we go. And that's it, there's a hose there. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. Everything's off, just double check here before I commit. That'll do. So, not as much fuel in that as I thought, actually. Right, that's it. Just stick that down there nice and easy. This bracket needs to come off. That'll be in the way. Same size, 10 mil. You can either use a socket set, but I've just got this handy, so I might as well use this. Just a bracket to hold your tank onto the frame. I used to think it was boring showing all these bits, but you know, if you've never done it before, uh, it's, it's, it's always worth seeing, isn't it? So that's the bracket, two bolts, easy enough for that. And I put that in the, uh, in fact, I put that near the tank, so I don't forget it. Because what I've done in the past, put the tank back on, I've got the bracket, uh, and it doesn't work like that at all. So let's have a look what we've got. Get some of these out of the way. Yeah, I'm going to move the camera so you can see a bit more now. Some of the things I have to disconnect to uh, to get to it, if I can. Okay, so move the camera a little bit closer. Got my surgeon's gloves on now because it does get a little bit uh, sharp. Some of the edges. I mean, they're not going to protect me that much, but they do help. Uh, so everything's out there. That's the choke cable, which I'm just loosening off. That is a pain because it it can crack in the uh, where it joins the carb. I've repaired it a couple of times, so I'm always careful there when I when I undo that. So I've got to get these uh, Jubilee clips off. That's the wrong size. Let me find the right size socket for that. Could use a screwdriver, of course, but I just find that a bit easier to get to. Looks like it could be number six. Yeah, it's a six. So just loosen these if you can see them. I know it's going to be difficult to see. This is where it attaches to the air box. And I'm just going to slide them out of the way. One on each side, obviously. Get them nice and loose. So they'll come out of the way easier. Right out of the way. That's it, that's them two off. And then there's another two there, posi drive or cross head. Where it goes from the carb into the, into the engine. I hope I'm not pulling, oh, you can't see my face because I'm pulling, I pull all sorts of faces when I'm doing these things. Like most people do. With your tongue ganging out or something. If it don't work, I always say, it's the way you're holding your tongue. So try to be careful in here because what you don't want to do is put your screwdriver through the rubbers because then you're going to get a lot of air coming in. It doesn't belong there. And you should really inspect these as well, which I, I will do. Make sure I've not split them. They've been on and off a few times now. And this is where the fun starts in a minute when we try and pull them carbs out. Let's get these clips right off. Slide them right back. That's it, they're out of the way. Okay, this is the fun bit. It is literally yank them out so 
I'm going to go for the back first. I'm just going to... That's it, just pulled it. I don't know if you saw that go a little bit. Get around this side. There we go, see that? Same again. Just watch these. This is where the bit that I want to be careful of. I'm going to take this off now, actually. This uh, choke cable. Can you see that there? Yes, you can. Just. It's, it's actually finger tight, that. It could have done with just being a little bit tighter. But I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm worried that I'm going to break that again. There it is. Got the plunger out. Just move that out of the way. In fact, there it is there. If you can see that. This plastic here has been repaired a few, a few times. Right on that joint there. Where it screws in. That's just a little bit of rubber, that. That's nothing. And it will always, you'll always get that movement in it. That's just a little plunger that goes into part of the carburetor. I don't know the technical names. I don't ever pretend to know the technical names either. But it's it's doing its job anyway. So if I operate the choke, you can see that it's on a spring. So obviously it'll go in and out there. Let's try again. There, you can see that. Let's move it out of the way. We've got the throttle cable yet to come off, which I'm going to do that now. Watch. Can you see that there? Yep. So we twist it, pull it off there first. So it just slots back in, look. Pull it off there and then twist it round slightly and that's it. So that's the throttle cable off. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? And we'll put that out of the way as well. Just leave that on the other side. These carbs are going to come out now. We've got the fuel pipe that's still connected, don't forget. And there'll be a drain hose somewhere as well. You're going to see my bodge up now on my drain hose. I didn't have any long enough hose to get it all the way down. So I've just attached like a joint, I suppose. There's no filter in that. It's literally just a drain. Oh, bit of fuel coming out. So I'm just going to hold that up. And there they are. I'll show you another shot in a minute. So you can see there. That's where they go in. Inspect those. You can see those again. Yep. Inspect them. Make sure there's no splits in them. They seem pretty good to me, actually. They seem all right. So you can see how we got the carbs out completely. There's still going to be a little bit of fuel in there. So I'm just going to get me uh, a little container. Get as much, uh, well, I want to get all the fuel out, really. So there's your fuel line. And always make a note of where everything is as well. Because if I start pulling these hoses off, if you're not 100% sure, there you go, see, I'll just tip it up a few times. Sounds like I've got most of it out. You can hear the floats, you won't be hearing for there, but that's the police there, you hang on. Try and bring them a bit closer so you can hear it. Yeah, got it coming out the overflow as well, of course, because I'm turning it upside down, as you can see. Still fuel in there, I can hear it. Surprise how much fuel sits in the carbs. Right. So, see if you can hear this. So, usually sat like that. You can hear the floats. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I'm going to strip this down a little bit now. Uh, I'm going to take these hoses off. Get rid of that. And again, put them somewhere safe. A little bit of fuel in there, not a lot. Fuel melts polystyrene, not the best base. But it's not going to stay on here. In fact, what I might do is strip it on the kitchen table because that always goes down well. 
Back in a bit. So here we are in the kitchen. The carburetor's on the kitchen table. Put a cloth down, just in case the missus comes in, obviously. And we're getting in trouble for that. So I'm just unscrewing these. Uh, this was an awkward one, actually. I'm going to replace that. I edited that bit out because I was a bit wound up with it. These are the float uh, bowls that I'm taking off now. And that's the float inside. And these look quite clean. You get a lot of residue in the bottom of them sometimes. So I'm just having a bit of a nosy as I take covers off, see if there's anything obvious in the way. That's the float. If you've never seen one before. Little plunger. These do get quite worn, so that's a new one. It's already been replaced. Now little bits and pieces in there. Don't know the technical name for that, but the plunger goes inside that. Just inspect the gaskets, the little O-rings. They've all been replaced at uh, not long ago on these. But I'm looking for an issue that's just not gone away. That one come off a bit easier. The cab's upside down at the moment, you may notice. And you can see the drain screw there. You can drain water off. It's collected at the bottom of the carb. Now these two floats do differ. One's got uh, almost like a little jet inside the uh, the funnel and you'll notice that one hasn't but the first one that took off has and that has to go back in the same place I think that's to do with the choke you can see that little jet actually you can point to it there there isn't one on that one Needed a little bit of help that one. Just having a nosy around, see if I can see anything. That's the idle adjustment that you can see. The, uh, the black with the with the screw on the end of it that's sticking out on the right as we look at it. Not to be confused with the idle jets, because those are inside the car, but that's just the idle adjustment for the speed. These are the diaphragm compartments, spring on there, don't lose that. And that's the actual diaphragm that I'm going to pull out now. Be gentle with these and, and inspect them. If they're split, they're no good. You can see that pin there goes up and down on the spring. And all these can be replaced. Little disc on the top there, a little washer underneath, and a circlip. And they've got different grooves in them. 
I've set mine at middle, in the middle groove. I think there's five, it's not hard to see on that. And that'll give you different rich richness of your fuel mixture. I just go for the middle and it seems to suit it. But I have noticed that some of these pins are different lengths when you order a new kit. To make sure they're the same as what he's taking out. Looks okay that one. Because it's great to do a video of it because you know how it goes back together if you forget. Same again. This one seems to be okay as well. There's no splits in it. Neither of the diaphragms. Now with the diaphragms removed you can see straight through the carb. Just giving a good old uh, good old looking up. Main jets out first. Always look through it, make sure there's nothing in the in the hole. Yeah, some some little jets in there as well. Don't know the actual name for them. Sure, somebody will. Now, what I noticed with these were um, they're not the uh, they're not the same as the old ones. These have come from a, a new kit, and I think this has given me the problem. What I've done, I've put the old ones back, cleaned them up, put them back in. You won't see this on the video. But they are not the same, they're different. And I think you have to be careful of this when you're ordering these new new kits for your carbs. It's not identical stuff that's arriving, and that's been the problem. Even the main jets were smaller. They had a smaller borehole in them. And the one I'm taking out now is the idle mixture screw. There's one on each carb. And this can make a massive difference if these aren't set right. So basically what I did throughout the uh, the remaining of this, this video, I took all these jets out and I compared them to the older ones. Uh, and in the end I found that they were quite different. So I cleaned up the older ones, put all them back. I've not shown that in the video and that seemed to uh, cure the problem. So be aware when you're ordering these kits on eBay that uh, compare them to the jets that you pull out. Just look at the hole sizes, they're completely different. I was quite surprised. The seals and the gaskets are okay, and the O-rings, but jet size is very, very different.
Okay, I've put the uh, carbs back together now. I've uh, had a look at the jets, give it a good clean. Uh, had a look at some uh, some of the newer jets that I've put on. The kit that I'd purchased um, on Fleabay. And uh, I noticed that there were different sizes from the original ones. So I've actually put the old ones back in, apart from the, the main jets, which were the same size. But there was a couple that were, they looked too small to me. So I've put the old ones back and cleaned them up. They look okay. So I'm going to give that a go. Um, everything's back. Everything's back to where it should be. Um, so let's see if I can adjust the camera and show you how easy it is to get back in. I'm going to glove up, get some silicone spray for the boots. Uh, not my boots, the rubber boots that the carb's going to go on. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. Now then, as you can see, this isn't easy to film, but uh, but we'll have a good go. Let's see if you can see it. If it don't work, it don't work, does it? The filming, I mean, not the carb. Right, we'll go in. So, I'm gonna have a look at these rubbers. Make sure these clips are all the way back. I don't know if you can see that. Clips there. Make sure they're all the way back on this side as well. All the way back. We're gonna soften these up a little bit with a bit of silicon spray. They look okay. They do look all right. That one's just starting to split slightly, but it's right on the collar, so I'm hoping that'll be all right. This is just silicone spray. Just make some slip on that a little bit easier. It won't do it any harm. Try and get it on the rubber if you can. Okay. There's a couple of things we need to do. We need to feed that down there. I'll sort that out after. That's just the drain. That's the fuel. I'll be able to grab all the those afterwards, so I'm not too worried about them at the moment, where they're going to land. I might try and get the fuel one through. There you go. That's that one. I have cut that a bit shorter now as well. Uh, he says, hoping it's not too short. So we've got the... Uh, we've got the choke cable to go on. Make sure you get it the right way around as well. That's the other thing that's important, obviously. That's, I'm just going to feed that back through because it's crossing over. I'll sort that out later, make sure it's not uh, in the way of anything. So I've got the choke cable. I'm actually going to, sorry, that's the throttle cable. Put that on in a minute. There's my choke. I'm going to put that on now because of the amount of times that I've snapped it in the past. It's, really, it's just so brilliant. It's a really bad design. So I'm hoping when you push it back in, you don't put any pressure on that plastic nut. I'm going to do it finger tight first. Hopefully you guys can see that. Make sure that it's on. Yeah, it's pretty good that. Looks all right to me. So we'll get a little span on it maybe. Get the right size, that might help. That fine spanner, it doesn't need to be that tight. Just as long as it's in enough, that's fine. I'm not doing it any tighter than that, because that will break off. It's not this bit here that breaks off, that's just a rubber uh, seal. It's this nut itself. So let's, let's get down into position a bit more. See how, that, see how easy that can snap there if we catch that. So we're just going to watch that. Let's get this uh, throttle cable back on before we go any further. That in there first. I hope you can see that. And that just snaps in there. That's pretty easy. And now for the fun bit. Get 
this thing out of the way. A loom. It is just a case of just pushing it in. Just watch this. If I snap that, I'm not going to be impressed. See, oh, it fell in then a little bit. I'm just keeping my eye on it. That seems to be okay. That seems to be good. That's okay. And what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to pull these out. Now there is a few people have mentioned the tool that you can use. I've actually found you don't need it. Um, if you just pry them rubbers out carefully. Right. So I'm just going to just lift these up slightly. These rubbers. And just get them into place. See how easy that one went then. So everybody was talking about a hook. But you don't actually. You don't actually need it. This bit here. Just be careful of this alloy because that they can break. See how that fell in then, that's the silicon. It does its job. It just helps it to just helps it to slip on. There we go, it's going now. Whoop, in we go. A little bit down there, I can see that's in. I'm just gonna check it all the way underneath. I made that look easy, didn't I? Okay, looking something like that now. Again, just make sure that it doesn't need moving a bit. I'm gonna get these, these on first. Let's slide them in. I'm just gonna come around the other side, make sure that it's on properly. to just move a few things out of the way. Yeah, this has got to be sealed well, otherwise you're going to get a lot of air coming in. It shouldn't be there. And it'll just mess your mixture up. So I'm quite happy that that, that one there is in position. So I'm going to nip that up. I'm using a screwdriver this time rather than a socket, but it doesn't really matter. I just find that sometimes they can slip off. Uh, and then there'll claret everywhere. Claret being blood, if you've never heard a term before. Red, both red. One you can drink, unless you're a vampire and you can drink both. Right, hang on. Now I'm going, just making sure that that's in a bit. I'm just going to pull it out slightly while I, while I tighten this one up. It's just struggling to locate a little bit. I'm not going to over tighten it because I don't want it pulling it off. It looks pretty good to me. And pull these other Jubilee clips on. These are a little bit more awkward, these are. Because it's such a tight space. Just wiggle them around a bit. That silicon helps. Just puts a bit of lubrication on there. That's that one on. Posi drive for this one. Crosshead. Whatever you want to call it. They used to call them Phillips, didn't they? Phillips heads. I think they must have been the first ones to ever make them. I think hex are better, a bit more grip. Make sure that it's on, that's good. Second one, again getting in there is just, just a nightmare. Who ever come up with this idea, honestly? Well, obviously BMW, but what a crap design. You better do that at a roadside, would you? You had a problem. I mean, they are just sat there now, aren't they? Just bouncing around. But it's on, as you can see. Choke cable is fine. Make sure that's slotted back in. Everything's looking pretty good. I'm going to put the tank back on. 
put the brackets back on, do that now, the bracket, while it's just entered my mind. That cable does just cross over, that's, that's how it is. Made that look easy, didn't I? I've only done it about eight times, that's why. Oops, didn't see that, did you? There we go, put the tank bracket back on. That's looking good. I'm gonna sort those tubes out in a minute before I start putting panels back on, make sure that all that reaches where it should reach. It's looking pretty good from here. All right, let's move the camera. They can go back on in a minute. These things are a pain. These little clips here. You can see one there, can't you? See that one, it's disappeared. I don't know where that is now. I'm gonna to have to find that. They just come off. Bit of a nuisance, really. There it is. Lucky, wasn't it? Look, oh, out. Them. So I'm just gonna squeeze that with a pair of flyers a little bit, just to make it a bit tighter. Put it back on and take some advice line them up before you put all the covering back on i don't know how many times i've done this as well they just seem to wander around and you can never get the screws back in looks pretty good that one's not quite right yeah Sorry about that, get me head in the way. Good. Here comes the tank. There's a few little lugs to line up. Oh yeah. Put it right into place, it's looking all right, that. Good. A little bit of fuel coming out of there. I'm gonna connect that up now. There we go. It's a bit better, that, isn't it? And that breather there, I'm gonna connect that up as well. Oh, and that's it. And it's just a matter of screwing all that back together now. And uh, next time we'll give it a go. I'm not going to bore you with putting it back together. You saw me take it apart. So I put the tank uh, back on temporarily for now, rather than putting all the panels back on, um, because you never know where anything could go wrong. So uh, rather than put everything back together, now I have to strip it again. Um, that's what I've done. Connected the fuel pipes back up, turned the tap on, the uh, fuel tap. Can't hear anything obvious. Now and again, if you've got something wrong, you'll hear a drip. Can't hear anything. So we're going to give it a quick uh, fire up. It might want adjusting. We'll have to see. Let's give it a chance to warm up. Turn the tick over up a little bit. Sound a bit low. Get 
about uh, one and a half thousand usually. You'll be able to tell better once it's warm. before was the problem before was that it was okay ticking over uh, I could rev up nice and slowly but as soon as I tried giving it some gas at higher revs it just used to cut out so I'm going to try and get that going out and not those revs up a little bit that's gone a bit low that That's much better, so I'm going to give that a go now and, uh, and see what happens. 